Hey, greetings everyone. Mr. Silky here. Welcome back to another Virtual Edge presentation. I pray that you're all doing well and staying healthy. And um, hey, I want to thank you guys for the great responses and ideas that you've been sending um, over these Virtual Edge programs. Please continue to send those. They're always awesome. You know, as we kind of navigate this crazy, contagious virus. And, you know, I was thinking this week, there's something else that's very contagious and we don't get enough of it. And that's laughter. All right. I love to laugh. There's something about that real strong belly laughter that when you get going and you just can't stop, that is so good for the soul. And uh, I saw these two kids this week, this video of these two kids laughing. Maybe you've seen this, but um, take a quick look at it. Now, I think these guys are living right. Um, I, I love watching them laugh like that. There's something special about it. As a matter of fact, I think uh, when Jesus talks about, if you want to know what the kingdom is like, watch a child. I think this is kind of what he's talking about in that, how simple they can be and how fun, you know, the laughter and all it is. And, you know, the Bible has quite a bit to say about laughter. And uh, matter of fact, there's one verse that talks about um, laughter is like medicine for the soul. All right, how cool is that? All right, you know, you just you just want to get more and, and put yourself in places where you can get some good, appropriate um, laughter. Um, a while ago, Coke did a commercial, and they didn't say a single word in the whole commercial, and it proved to be one of the best ones they ever put together. And um, here, take a look at it and uh, see what you think. Yeah, you talk about something that's contagious. Um, I just can't get enough of that commercial. I love the way, you know, the, the laughter started small and it just rolled through that entire subway car. And you saw people's faces that were grumpy or bored looking all of a sudden just come alive. And that's a heart change. And it can happen just like that um, with laughter. So I'm strongly encouraging all of you today to um, to find a way to laugh and maybe make somebody else um, laugh too, but do it appropriately, all right? Okay, let's open up with a prayer. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, amen. Dear Lord, thank you for the simple things in life that mean so much to us, like joy and laughter. Um, thanks for the many things also that we take for granted in this world. 
that maybe now as we go through this historical event, we may realize how much we have and how much we have been blessed with. Please continue to be with us and calm and guide us through this storm. Be with all of those who are risking their own lives for the sake of others and especially be with all those who are sick and infected with this virus. Father, we ask that you quickly um, get rid of this disease somehow so that we can safely get back to, um, to some type of a normal life. Um, thank you, Jesus, for your presence here with us right now. And please know how much we love you. It is in your great name we pray. And we all said, Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, a few days ago, early in the morning, I went to a Meyer store. And I walk in, and I'm the only one there, and there is a very pleasant person greeting me as I come in, and they have their face mask on and gloves, and they're sanitizing a basket for me, and they give it to me. And I start walking down the main aisle, and uh, I look around, and it's just spotless. All right, the place could not have been more clean. Then I looked in the aisles. All right, there was toilet paper, there were Lysol wipes, there were there was hand sanitizer. I couldn't believe it. Um, and all of a sudden, I, I had this physical feeling of being overwhelmed with gratitude. Okay, this has never happened to me before in a Meyer store. But I just stood there, and I closed my eyes for a second and just said thanks. And I said, you know, God, I don't ever want to take this for granted again. All right, I will always be thankful for the things you provide us with. And, uh, you know, I don't ever want to be tempted to go back to the ways it used to be. It's such a good thing that has happened through uh, this crazy time. And uh, that temptation is something I want to talk about today. I want to talk about temptation in general. Uh, I saw a story this week of a teenage boy who uh, he found some money and he was actually at an ATM making a cash withdrawal. He wanted to uh, buy his grandfather some socks. And uh, I guess he looked down and there was this bag of money, bag of cash. And he's looking at it. And okay, it wasn't $100. It wasn't even $1,000. It was $135,000 all wrapped up in cash just sitting there. And again, he's all by himself looking at this. And I'm thinking, okay, what would I do? What would you do? All right, think about that for a second. And uh, I know what I'd be tempted to do probably, but let's watch how this plays out. Good afternoon. Not everyone would do what an Albuquerque teen just did. He found more than a hundred grand in cash and turned it in. And today, police honored the young man. Here's News 13's Gabrielle Burkhart. When 19 year old CNM student Jose Nunez Romaniz called police on Sunday, the story that unfolded got the attention of city leaders. Today, he was recognized for doing the right thing when no one was looking. What a great opportunity uh, for us to see some good in the community. With all the tragedies we see with young people, this really restores our faith in, in the community as well. Albuquerque Police Chief Mike Geyer, along with Mayor Tim Keller, presented Nunez with some tokens of appreciation, saying his actions on Sunday reflect the goodness in the community. Nunez was at the Wells Fargo ATM near Central and Wantabo on Sunday morning to get money to buy his grandpa some socks. But when he looked down, he saw a big, clear bag full of cash, $135,000 to be exact. The teen immediately called the 1-800 number on the ATM and then police. It turns out the Wells Fargo subcontractor, whose job it is to fill the ATM, left the cash there by accident. Man, we all know that temptation. Uh, even just to take a little, just one of those bundles <laughs> off the top. I mean, that had to be really hard. So. All joking aside, Nunez is studying criminal justice at CNM and wants to per pursue a career in law enforcement. We asked Nunez what went through his mind when he found the cash. In the back of my head, I was just thinking about my parents, especially my mom. What, what would she would do if I came home with the money and what she would do with her chancla to hit me? <laughs> <laughs> Now, PNM presented Nunez with a $500 check to put towards his tuition. El Patron gave him a gift card and a $500 cash reward. Then ESPN Radio gave the family Lobo football season tickets and assigned Erlacher football. Back to you. 
Okay, thanks, Gabby. Now, Nunez did thank his mom and his dad for teaching him to do the right thing. Okay, well, that story certainly has a happy ending, and uh, Jose certainly did the right thing as much as he may have been tempted not to. But uh, I kind of look at that story and I go, what happened to the dude that was supposed to be putting all that money in that ATM? And uh, what, did he get distracted or something? You know, he got one job, put the money from the bag into the machine, and, you know, maybe he got a phone call, who knows, but he ends up leaving all that cash there, and off he goes, and I wonder if at any point he realized that he had just left all that money there for somebody to grab, but um, anyway, you know, as I, as I think about temptation, and I think about all the elements involved with it, so many times it involves sin, and uh, the evil one is really good at disguising sin to make it look very attractive to us. And before you know it, we can dive in and, uh, and it can totally kill and destroy our souls. And that's obviously the last thing we ever really want to happen. Now, let me kind of give you an illustration of how temptation works. Um, during our last Virtual Edge program, I had mentioned that I was a little sad because we were going to miss out on a 25-year tradition because Jellystone Park wasn't going to be open for our family down in Indiana for Memorial Day weekend um, because of the virus. Well, guess what? The governor changed his mind and uh, opened up the park and or opened up all of Indiana for uh, parks like this. So we were able to go down as a family so the tradition lives on. And we had a great time keeping our social distance. But I actually went down um, a little bit early to make sure that um, I was able to open our place up. And, you know, you, there, I don't like surprises. And you never know what can happen at a place that's been locked up over the winter. And I got down and opened up. And there were no big surprises, but we had ants. We had tons of those good-sized carpenter ants, and uh, my family doesn't really love ants, so I had to do something um, fast. And I, I ran to the store, and I bought this product, okay? It's just a little plastic guy, and uh, it has some liquid in it, and um, all you do is you break off the top, and then you just lay it down on a surface near where you're seeing these ants. So I put about four or five of these down, and then I watched a short video to, you know, to explain to me how this works. And what they say is um, ants are going to immediately be drawn into it. They will be tempted to go right in because the liquid is designed to really be able to um, attract them and make them want to be a part of it. So sure enough, as soon as I put these things down, within minutes, I'm seeing ants come from everywhere. It was kind of scary. And I started, I wanted to just start killing the ants. But the instructions are, don't kill the ants. Let them go. Let them have their fun. And then they kind of take care of themselves. So what ends, what ends up happening is they actually go in inside of this and um, they, their bodies get coated with this fluid. And then they take it back to their nests where all their buddies are hanging out. And within uh, 12 to 24 hours, everybody's dead. And it says, you don't really have to do anything. It says, once you put these out in 12 to 24 hours, you won't see any more ants. And I thought, yeah, right. They worked, okay? I, I had, once I put this thing down and the ants did their thing, I haven't seen one ant the whole time, the whole weekend we were there. So I was amazed. But then I started thinking, that's kind of how temptation works for us. Something that looks attractive, that we don't know the damage that it can do, and then we just continue to go in. Now, I was amazed when I learned the ingredients of rat poison. Here, check this out. Okay, rat poison is 99.99% other ingredients or protein, and only 0.01% poison. Now, why is that? Well, if rat poison was 100% poison, no self-respecting rat would take a bite of that. But because it's 99.99% protein food, then they're all over it. They attack it, they eat it, and it's their last supper, and that's that. Now, a while ago, we, had a, we have a three-season room attached to our house, and in the winter, um, some mice somehow got into that room, and I was trying to get rid of them, and I tried to be nice. I asked them several times. They did not want to cooperate. So I did what um, what most people would do. I went out and bought some traps, all right? And I set three traps out at once, all in a row, put a little peanut butter on them, and uh, I went to bed, got up the next morning, and I couldn't believe it. All three traps 
had captured a pretty good sized mouse. And um, I was going to show you guys a picture of it, but I didn't think it was appropriate for a virtual edge. So I'm going to hold that back. But all I could think of was, really? Like, I could see the first guy going in and slam, you know, he gets his back scratch. But then you would think the second guy would look and go, hey, I see what happened to my buddy here. I'm not going to touch that. But no, he goes right for it. And the third guy, same thing, okay? Now, only a mouse would be so stupid as to go after something that is going to ultimately lead to their death, right? Well, I don't think so. I think every day, you and I, I think we are all tempted to go after something that we know at some level is not good for us. And if we continue down that road, it could ultimately lead to some real damage in our lives. Now, let's take just a moment and look at a couple of scriptures and what they say about temptation. From Paul's letter to the Hebrews, we learn that, For because he himself has suffered when tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. From 1 Corinthians, we hear, No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will also provide the way of escape, that you may be able to endure it. And then from James, it says, Blessed is the man who perseveres in temptation, for when he has been proved, he will receive the crown of life that he promised to those who love him. No one experiencing temptation should say, I am being tempted by God. For God is not subject to temptation to evil, and he himself tempts no one. Rather, each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. Then desire conceives and brings forth sin, and when sin reaches maturity, it gives birth to death. So there are a few things about temptation that are absolutely true and are going to happen no matter what. First, we know that every human being who ever walked the face of this earth has been tempted, including Jesus, okay? Next, we're taught that any temptation that we face is not new to us. Everyone has been tempted by many, many different ways. We also learn that God never allows us to be tempted beyond what we can handle and always gives us a way out of the temptation. And finally, we learn that if we give in to our temptations, ultimately, uh, they will ruin us. All right, so we have to learn how to handle our temptations and to deal with them as they come up. Okay, now I want to give you five ways that you can resist temptations, okay? Number one, pray as Jesus taught us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Apart from God, we have no hope of resisting temptation. This is why sincere and humble prayer must be our constant companion, especially when we're looking temptation in the eye. Okay, number two, learn to recognize temptation. It presents to us as pleasant, true, or both. We want to give in because it pulls on our desires and offers us with something that seems good. The problem is that at the moment we are being tempted, we might not even recognize it until it has already led to sin. We need to faithfully look and recognize when we are being tempted. Number three, take preventative action. If you know certain situations will bring you into temptation, take the necessary steps to avoid them. Whether it's hanging out with certain people, watching or listening to certain things, or going places you know will be tempting to you, do something to prevent the temptation from even having a chance at you. This is where having someone you trust hold you accountable is a great idea. Number four, quote scripture to yourself. And to quote it, you have to know it. So make a point of learning scripture that will help you when you're being tempted. When Satan went after Jesus in the desert, Jesus quoted scripture back to him with each temptation that he was given, and it worked to perfection. But you have to have it in you to be able to use it when needed. And finally, number five, remember, there is always a way of escape. God gives himself to us without limit, to call upon his strength for resistance and endurance. God has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Now we need to take full advantage of these ideas and resources that God provides for us so that we can effectively turn away from sin and be more filled with the goodness and grace of the Holy Spirit. Now this Sunday coming up is actually Pentecost Sunday, marking the celebration of the Holy Spirit being given to us. 
Now here's a quick refresher of exactly what Pentecost Sunday is about. Hi, I'm Kai for Catholic Central. So what is the Holy Spirit? A dove? Fire? Something to do with confirmation where you graduate church? You might be surprised to know that the Holy Spirit is what protects you when you're afraid. It gives you strength and inspiration when you're uncertain. It makes you bold. We celebrate the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. Pentecost was originally a Jewish feast to mark 50 days after Passover. It took on a new meaning for Christians when, about 50 days after Easter, the Holy Spirit came and rested upon the apostles so that they were completely filled with it. Some backstory. When Jesus ascended into heaven, he promised his spirit to his disciples. But they had no idea what that meant until the day it descended with the sound of rushing wind and tongues of fire symbolizing breath and transformation. It moved the apostles to action, and everyone miraculously heard them in their own language. According to scripture, over 3,000 people were converted and baptized that day. And from then on, the disciples were able to go out and start spreading Jesus' message, which is why some people refer to it as the church's birthday. The apostles didn't even have to ask for it. It was Jesus' promise to always be with them. Even today, God is always present and active in our lives, and the Holy Spirit can inspire and strengthen us. Pope Benedict XVI said that the Holy Spirit opens our hearts to hope and helps each of us be witnesses to God's love. For all of us here at Catholic Central, we hope you have an inspiring Pentecost. Well, thanks to Kai and to his team over there at Catholic Central for that message. Very informative. Good stuff. So, anyway... Um, a little over a year ago, I received a random email from a young man named Jacob Scally, and he introduced himself, and he told me about uh, this band that he had down in Ohio, a, some young men and um, a good Catholic uh, worship band, and uh, he said, if you're ever in need of a band for a retreat or anything at all like that, that they would love it if we considered them. And um, I didn't respond to the email, but I went online and checked them out, and um, I was impressed. I was impressed by what I saw, but, uh, you know, most of it was, um, you know, studio uh, music, and none of it was really live, and the real test of a band like that is how do they do live? And so I kind of put it aside and didn't think much of it, but then um, several months after that, I was planning for the Shine Rally that we had last November, and we needed a band. So I sent an email, and we connected, and we talked a couple times, and I thought, I really like the, the professionalism, the maturity, and uh, the love for the Lord that this young man um, has. So we decided to roll the dice, and we invited them up for um, the rally that day. And in case you weren't there, or even if you were there, here's a little 20-second uh, reminder of, um, of what took place that day. Okay, these guys are really, really talented. And they are such strong, young Catholic Christians. They are awesome role models. And um, they are doing so much work for the Lord right now. On the day we held the Shine Rally, they were here for like 12 hours. Okay, um, it, it was so awesome. They played music for the rally. Then they played reflective music for adoration. They did all the music for the evening mass. And they, they just hit it out of the park. And I got... A Scally Brothers t-shirt and the deal and I'm rocking it right now I love it um, but these guys are amazing live and I can't say enough good about them as a matter of fact I actually had them booked to do our middle school vacation Bible school this summer um, in June and of course we had to postpone that but um, I asked Jacob if maybe he would say hi to you guys and uh, and play a song for you from their quarantine home down in Ohio so here is uh, Jacob and Zach uh, Scally so enjoy Hey, hello, Our Lady Good Counsel, the Edgers. Um, I'm Jacob. I'm Zach. And we are the Scally Brothers, and we are so very happy to be with you on this virtual Edge program. Thank you um, for joining us, guys. It means so much to us, you know, you tuned in. Yeah, this past November, if you guys remember, we were with you all um, there in Plymouth. Um, it was a great time at the Shine uh -huh. Youth Rally, and we had a great time worshiping with you, and we also got to have Mass together, which was, mm -hmm. which was super special. 
Um, but we're, we're a young Christian band, um, Catholic band, actually. And, yeah. And we go around the whole nation um, talking to folks like you guys about a cool guy named Jesus and yeah. how he's done so much amazing things in our life. And I'm sure he's done some amazing things in yours. Um, so um, if you guys aren't following us, uh, go over to Instagram, Facebook, uh, message us to say hello. We'd love to chat with you or yeah. send us an email. Um, but we miss you guys. Um, please, we'd love to hear from you just to see how you guys are doing. But mm -hmm. look up the Scally Brothers, um, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Um, message us and say, hey, my name is whatever. And we saw you at um, the Shine Youth Rally in Plymouth. And I just wanted, was just checking in. We'd love to hear from you yeah. um, because we've been hanging out a lot. Right. We haven't really been able to leave our house too much. So we've been, we've been seeing a lot of each other, and we want to see more of you guys. Right. Uh, but this summer has, has been um, interesting for us as a band. Uh, we had about... 50 shows lined up um, for the summer and 90% of those have been canceled about 90% of those are now canceled yeah. um, which is which is sad and we miss seeing you guys on the road right um, but I'm so happy that mr. Z reached out to to me about a week ago or so and, yeah. and said hey would you guys want to be a part of this um, virtual edge event and, and we couldn't say no yeah we love you guys so much you know yeah we were talking about songs because we wanted to play a song that was particularly special for this time yeah um, and Zach and I were actually sitting out just a few minutes ago and we were saying, hey, what's a, what's a good song we could play? Mm -hmm. And Zach actually had the idea. Yeah, and that's Hold Us Together by Matt Marr. And I think this, this song has so much power, especially during this COVID time. You know, it's really, really important to keep the faith. You know, and it can be very difficult, especially with times like these. Maybe you have family members that are sick, or maybe you're facing a hard trial in your life. But I think it's important for us to realize that God's with us every step of the way. And also, that we're going to get through this together. You yeah. know, and... Of course, it can seem like this is never going to stop or it's never going to end. But at the same time, we have an amazing Father in Heaven that cares so much about you guys. Amen. And what's really important is that we can worship together. And I think just that union in our faith and that belief we have in God is something that we all share that's incredibly impactful. Yeah, you know? it's very, very special. As Zach said, um, the thing that's going to hold us all together is love. Yeah, and love will hold us together. Right.
be my brother's keeper and the whole world will know that we're not alone Holiday yeah. Council, the Edgers, may God bless you with the Scally Brothers, we'd love to hear from you God bless and take care, be safe y'all Okay, how awesome was that? We are so thankful for the Scally brothers and for them taking the time to send us that message. Uh, I strongly encourage everyone to please check them out on social media, connect with them, send them a message, and watch every Saturday, um, I believe evening around 7.30, they do a live concert on Facebook. So you might want to take a look at that. It's very inspiring and entertaining. Uh, we will have them back here soon, hopefully, at OLGC, as soon as we are able to. So thanks again, guys. You're the best. Now, uh, one more thing before I close this in a prayer. I am not a big fan of all the stuff that's on television these days. Um, but a couple days ago, I, I saw a segment on America's Got Talent that just blew me away, and I have to share it. And it's, it's about eight or nine minutes long, but it was too good to edit down. There's just too much in this video. And I didn't want to take any away. And um, here at OLGC, we have a huge heart for the homeless situation in this country. And we actually house the homeless once a year um, through the Rotating Shelter Program. And um, this video just really blew me away. Um, it kind of speaks for itself, but it's taking uh, homeless people and putting them on the stage at uh, America's Got Talent. Okay, how can you pull that off? Well, here's how. Watch this. All right, if that doesn't move you, I don't know what will. Just an amazing story. Absolutely love it. Please join me in a closing prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for the reminders today about the importance of understanding temptation and our need to do all we can to avoid it. Thanks also for sending us the Holy Spirit at Pentecost to help us through temptation and to guide us and protect us in so many ways. Thanks also for the Scally Brothers and the wonderful ministry they have. Please keep them strong and committed to using their God-given talent to, to spread the gospel for many years to come. And finally, thanks for people who have a heart for the homeless, just like you do. Please help us to be deeply moved and inspired to the point of action by people like this. Father, we love you. It's in your name we pray. And we all said, Amen. Thanks, everyone. See you next time.